prepared. I'm Dan St. Ives, and today I'm speaking with Owen Chan, Artistic Director with the Kinkanauts, Calgary's Improv Laboratory. They have their fifth week of their six-week season, opening April 15th and running until April 18th at the Bird and Stone Theatre. Owen, thanks so much for taking time. I'm happy to be here. So, the Kinkanauts have enjoyed a pretty good run since they've been here in Calgary. Uh, can you take us back a bit in time? How long have you been with them? Uh, so, I started the company with uh, three good friends of mine in Calgary in about 2006, 2007, one of the two, depending on whose story you want to believe. <laughs> um, yeah, and we just got together because we loved a particular style of improv, and, and we thought the best way to do that was kind of produce it ourselves. Just that sort of, <laughs> let's make a small company of people and do it on our own, because that's easier. It's not, but we wanted to do it that way. So yeah, we started doing that. Um, two of the founding members moved away, so it was just me and my buddy Jason. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> he had a baby, so it was just me, and we were sort of looking around going like, well, he can do three shows a year, and that was not enough for me. So we started teaching classes, and I was like, well, I guess we gotta get a bunch of people around us who wanna do the same thing. Uh, so yeah, six, seven years later, we're about 45 performing members, audience of hundreds of people every year that come to see it. Uh, we work with guests from all over North America, doing different styles and formats. And then the last two years, we call ourselves the, the laboratory, the laboratory, depending on your <laughs> yeah. British background. Um, <laughs> Yeah, because we've been trying to experiment with a whole bunch of different things. So we'll do everything from an improvised musical to, uh, you know, this show week is coming as improvised Tarantino. Yeah. Yeah. So there is an appetite for improv comedy here in Calgary. Oh, it's huge. Well, and as all these, all of the companies in Calgary know, like, there's a bit of an improv renaissance happening in the city. Yeah. So just, um, the audiences are aware, the city's aware, we've all started working with each other and, and, and supporting each other's shows. The Loose Moose is doing amazing work as always. There's a small company called Obviously Improv doing it. The Improv Guild had a big show downtown a couple weeks ago. Uh, there's a hip hop improvised night at Cafe Coy called Notorious. Um, so there's just all these, and then there's hundreds of other little groups doing shows with us, with other companies. Um, you know, a friend of mine does a show with, which is uh, about being from Newfoundland, and they have like a you know traditional band that plays, and they do a big wow. thing. So it's just everywhere, and, and audiences are really receptive to it. This particular outing you uh, alluded to is called an improvised Quentin uh, Tarantino. Yeah. So it's pretty self-explanatory, I gather. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> blood, swearing, um, lots of people will probably die, um, and then a lot of conversations about nothing. So or little things, maybe not nothing. And I, is it going to be like uh, Tarantino, where there's a big part for music in the... Huge, yeah. yeah. So we actually have this company from Victoria called Paper Street Theatre. They're really good friends of ours, yeah. uh, and they've come for the last two years. So we've done an improvised film noir with them, and we've done improvised John Hughes was last year. And so what they do is they take genres, they're doing an improvised western last week back in Victoria, and they, they really investigate them. So they'll watch like the 10 or 20 films that are of that style, they'll break it down, and then we rebuild it as a theater piece. Um, and so, yeah, so music. Um, how do you recreate shots on stage? Like, how can we make it feel like a Tarantino film? Costuming, um, special effects, lighting, sound, all of those kinds of things, so that it really is an improvised, 100% improvised in the moment, yeah. but being true to the genre and the style of that piece. So John Hughes was hugely fun. Lots of music, ridiculous 80s costumes, ah. all that kind of stuff. So for people that would go to stand-up comedy, you don't yeah. necessarily want to sit in the front row because you might get picked on. But for improv... For, well, for, it depends on the kind of improv. For our kind of improv, we will take, for, for Tarantino, for instance, we'll get one or two titles from the audience at the beginning of the show, and then the lights go down and it's very much like a theater performance. So we're very much on the theater side of it. Uh, the very most that we would do is get one or two suggestions at the beginning of a show. Uh, we did an improvised musical last show week, and we just asked for the title of a musical. So our first night was She-Ra the Musical. It was amazing. I got to play uh, a winged unicorn. Oh, nice. So that was really fun. <laughs> a singing winged unicorn. So I get to put that on my resume now, which is nice. Yeah, so it's just we usually just get one or two suggestions in the beginning, and that's about it. Do you find, uh, like I've been seeing live improv for decades, yeah. are there just a handful of suggestions you would rather not hear every night that you're out there? No, I'm happy to do the penis show week <laughs> after week if you want. Like, and it's because when you take the amount of time that you need to, to really explore a topic, it doesn't matter what the word is. Yeah. So we've done we've done things as silly as you know spatula is always the argument. Like give us a kitchen utensil, everyone says spatula. It's just the weird way the North American brain is worded. Maybe yeah. in China they would say something else. I don't know. <laughs> 
Um, but, it, you know, so if I only have three minutes to do a scene about that, my choices are pretty limited. But in a 45 minute show, that spatula can mean hundreds of different things. So I could do the spatula show or the bathroom show over and over again for weeks, and I feel very confident it would never be the same show. So yeah, if you want to come and yell the one word that you love at our show every week, we'll be happy to have you. Over the last little while, as popular as improv has been, and it's come, you know, like it, it's been Huge. around across the pond, it's been everywhere, but yeah. for some reason everybody seems to find that big success out of whose line is it anyway. Great. Is, yeah. that, is that something that is beneficial? Oh my or? god, yeah. Are you kidding? It's a successful <laughs> television show that means that people understand the basic tenets of what you were doing on stage. Yeah. So we just have to say now, it's improvised. Yeah. We don't have to explain what that means, define that it's different than a scripted piece, or how it might be different than a scripted piece, and that knowledge is huge. People have an understanding when they come to your show Oh, they don't, they don't know what's going to happen specifically. And before the television show and the popularization of the idea of improv, that was not true. And, and there's TV shows now that have you know, characters taking improv classes. You know, like uh, Steve Carell in The Office takes an improv right. class. And yeah. um, people go to improv shows in TV shows now. Uh, so there's just there's a lot more understanding of what it is. And that means that you're more free to do your work because the audience's expectations are more in line with where you hope they might be. So you've got a core, and I, I know I read in here somewhere that you have some 30-odd members. They're all many? odd. Yeah. <laughs> Every single one of them. How many of them are in this show, or are all of them? So we do, we do six show weeks a year, as you mentioned. Um, and so we have a variety of different shows. They're all different. So we'll do six shows over four different days. Uh, Wednesday night is one of our student groups. So they, they train on a weekly basis with one of our amazing coaches, Aaron Ranger. Uh, and they'll do different styles and different formats on a Wednesday night. And we'll do an experimental night on a Wednesday night, too. So on a Wednesday night, you might see 20 to 25 of us doing everything from a three-minute mime piece to a seven-minute musical inspired by bathroom humor, right? And it's different every week. Yeah. Uh, Thursday night, obviously improv, the short-form improv. So a lot more similar to what you might see on TV. They come in and they do that. That's a whole other company of people that we get to partner with, and they do a weekly show with us. And then Friday night in our improvised Tarantino, there'll be about 10 of us in the cast. Yeah. But we have an open, two opening acts that are also duos or short performances or another house team that has a coach that's working on a new style or genre. We have late night shows at 10 o'clock. We do one called Mixtape, which is a whole bunch of different improvisers from The Loose Moose, from Obviously Improv, from Dirty Laundry, from us. And we all get together and we all do this fun jam show at the end of our show week. So it's really like every single show is completely different. So much like the theater community and the yeah. music community, it's, it's not competitive, it's collaborative. You know, there's, a, there's an element of competitiveness in the fact that we all want to be successful and reach our audiences. And we all, we all want to be the ones who are, who are touching something about the artistic button of the city, right? But you quickly realize that we're not competing with each other. We're competing with people's amount of time they have the amount of money they have to go spending on things, yeah. um, you know, out of sports events, um, big name shows from out of town coming in, you know, that's who we're competing with. So in, in that way, we're all on the same page. And then as individual performers, we just love playing with each other because we're so much fun. <laughs> and, and improv in particular is all about collaboration and being in the moment. And so it's very hard to be competitive when you're espousing that kind of artistic goals of, oh, we want to work with people and we want to say yes to things. So if you're doing that, you're going to want to work with each other. Well, I'd say that uh, there's only a few nights, so come early, come a little bit late. You don't want to be stuck in the metal for oh, an improvised Quentin Tarantino yeah. night with the cake and Yeah, and if you sit in the front row, there's a good chance you'll get sparkle blood on you. Oh, so that's so a nice promise. That's a selling feature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. Uh, so the fifth week of their sixth season, uh, the King Canots, opening April 15th, running only till April 18th at the Burdenstone Theatre. Owen, thanks so much. Thanks a lot.